free. Amen. Amen. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I'm Amen. thankful this morning to see freedom break out. I am thankful this morning to see freedom break out. And it... That's the goal of this. The whole purpose of the Gospel. Freedom. That's the whole purpose. If you have your Bibles today... Uh, turn with me to Judges, the 6th chapter. And uh, we'll be starting in verse 1. And uh, I'm going to read the first verse, but I'm going to give you a little bit of an understanding of where we're at. Uh, verse 1 says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. If you're taking notes, the first point I want you to write this morning is identifying the root. We have to find the root. And what I want to introduce to you this morning is generational curses and how to recognize these patterns that show us their presence. Right? So everybody's got a past, right? Amen? Yeah. But everybody also has a family. All right? And that tree has sprouted many different ways and come forth to you at this point. And unfortunately, some of us have had family members in the past that have done things that not that we're held accountable for, but we may have to deal with the fruit of their decisions. Amen. Okay, so the Bible says this. In Psalms 139, 23 through 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and oh. lead me into the way of the everlasting. There has to be an internal searching that takes place to bring out all the things that you're not aware of. Freedom comes from cutting loose the roots of these generational curses, through cutting the ties with these things that allow these demons to plague your bloodline. We must identify the root. First John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all of our sins. That's Him taking out the root. That's Him not only giving us forgiveness. The, the, the church today preaches that grace is the forgiveness of sin. And it is. But they don't teach you that it's the power of God to overcome it. Amen. You have the power of God to walk away from sin, to break generational curses, to cast out demons. Acts 1 and 8 says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power. Amen. 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 I need you to understand something. First Titus 3 and 5 says it's not by works of righteousness that we have done, but it's by the washing, by the regeneration, and the renewing yes. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have to identify the root. And we're given the power to do so. We're yes. given the authority to search within ourselves by the power of God and sever the roots of generational curses. Now we recognize this through patterns. right? Everybody's got a dad. Everybody's got a granddad. Everybody's got an uncle. And they say, well, my grandfather was an alcoholic, so my dad was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic, so I'm an alcoholic. That is a generational curse. Amen. That is a pattern that you can now recognize so you can stop it with you. Amen. We must identify the root. Somebody say it stops with me. It stops, it with me. stops here. Amen. But Judges chapter 6, we're going to verse 2. It says, And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because the Midianites, the children of Israel, made them dens which are in the mountains, and caves, and strongholds. It don't matter how heavy and secure that you, you, you make these strongholds to protect your goods when Satan has a key to it. Everybody hear me on that? Amen. You try to live in sin, build strongholds to protect it, but if you've given Satan the key, yeah. it don't do you no good. Amen. It don't do you not a, nothing of good. And listen to this, verse 3. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amechalites and the children of the east, even when they came up against them, they stole their increase. Yeah. The enemy wants to steal your increase. When they lived in sin, when they lived under curses, when they lived demonized, and they walked forward trying to get it all together, they weren't heaping it for themselves, they were gathering it for the one they were working yeah. with. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Man. It says, the, the lust of your father you will do. Yeah. Amen. Uh-oh. We've got to wake up, church. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at these verses, verses 3 through 5, you'll see it says... And so it was when Israel had sown that they come up and stole it. That was him stealing. Okay, verse 4 says, And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel. Neither sheep nor ox nor ass. There's nothing to sustain life. 
The enemy came no matter what efforts they made. They came in and they took everything that provided sustenance for their life. Yeah, come on. They stole it. Because the enemy comes to steal, to kill you. Verse 5, for they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for the multitude. Both they and their camels were without number. They entered into the land to destroy so understand that when you live serving Satan, not only does he have a key to your house, but everything that you try to earn is not yours, but his. Amen. Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to take the things that you think are going to be blessings to you, and he curses them. Amen. There is no increase when you live for Satan. There is no increase when you live for sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. They came to destroy the Israelites. Don't be afraid to cry out. Israel was greatly impoverished. This is verse 6. They were greatly impoverished. Meaning they had nothing left. Meaning they were scraping by. Meaning a drink of water was once every week or so. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. You cannot be afraid to cry out. We get so prideful when we're living in sin that people are going to know. Yeah. That people are going to judge me. That people are going to say, look at him. Listen, friend, you've got to get beyond that. Yeah. And you've got to cry out to God. Amen. What did he tell the, Egypt, the, the Israelites when they went into Egypt? He says, I have seen the affliction of my people. Yeah. And I have heard their cry. Yeah. Are you tired of the enemy stealing your increase? Are you tired of everything you work for being taken away from you? And it seems like no matter how, how much you work, how much you try, how much forward you go, that it all just gets taken away? It says they were impoverished. Nothing. But take it right out. Psalm 69 and 3, David says, I am weary with my crying. My throat is parched. We've got to be willing to not only just cry out, but keep crying out. Mm -hmm. There has to be some endurance with this. Amen. It takes dedication. When, you, when your throat is parched with praying, you've got to keep praying. Yeah. When your throat is parched with fasting, you've got to keep fasting. Amen. Amen. There has to come, you know, you know, a lot of times we ask, we say, why, why would God allow this to happen? Why would God let this happen? And I, I want to tell somebody that sometimes God will allow you to lose everything so you recognize yeah. that He's the only thing. You Amen. Right? Amen. Because desperation, yeah. right? When we get desperate, it creates in us the strength of urgency to repent of yeah. our sins. Amen. See, the whole point of this was for the children of Israel to turn from the idols of the land. See, we, we're in chapter 6. But in verses 1 through 5, they did not obey God. Amen. He came into the land, they left Joshua, he died, and he said, Do not join with the inhabitants of the land, for their gods will become a snare unto you. Listen, you might live in America, but you don't have to worship their gods. Amen. Amen. You may live in Short Creek, you may live here in Bermanport, but you ain't got to worship addiction. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Verse 7. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which saith unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have brought you out of Egypt. He ever brought you out of somewhere? Yeah. He brought you out of the valley and brought you to the mountaintop so you could lead somebody else up. Mm. That's another word. He says, I brought you out of Egypt and brought you forth of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all of those that oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. They were told, do not join the other nations. Do not lean to their idols. Do not serve alcoholism. Do not serve pornography. Yeah. Do not bow down to the altar of lust. He said, turn from their idols. No. They didn't listen. They didn't listen. Now what you understand, this was generations ago from where we're at in the text. This was five, six ju uh, judges ago. Five uh, or six of them. And every time that the judge would die, the children of Israel would turn back to the idols. Now if you read verse chapters 1-6, through six, you'll recognize that pattern. Because it opens up with, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. 
So once you recognize the pattern of what has happened, right. you can finally come to the realization that all you needed to begin with was God and that you can cry out to Him and He will deliver you. We've got to come to that. If you don't realize that, then you might need deliverance. You might need somebody to break that curse over you. Yeah. Verse 11 it says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an opera, that pertained unto Joash the Abazarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress to hide it from the many gods. <laughs> now I want you to understand, when you live for Satan, it, it, the reason you hide everything is he's provided you a counterfeit secret place. Yeah. Amen. Not a place that fills you, but a place that takes away from you. Come on. Right? And he makes you live in that so he can take everything that sustains right. life for you. Amen. For when you get in the secret place, God gives you yeah. oil. He gives you new life. He gives Come you new on. fire. He gives yeah. you His presence that you can walk forward in it. Amen. 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 But He provides a counterfeit secret place. And we get comfortable in it. Yeah. They can't get me here. They don't know I'm down here. They'll never steal my increase. I'm going to keep working down here. I'm going to keep putting it to the side. I come to the Midianites. <laughs> they said, The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, you mighty man of valor. How hopeless do we feel when we're in those situations? How bad is it when, we, when we're down in the wine press trying to hide every increase we can get and we just feel like this ain't for me. I could never do it. I could never be an overcomer. I could never win this battle. It's always lose, lose, lose. He says, you mighty man of valor. Romans 4, 17 says, God, don't see it as it is, but He calls it though it was. He has called you forth as something in His kingdom, not of this world. You are a mighty man of valor when it comes to your issues. If you would cry out to God and let Him empower you, Come on. Amen. 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 Somebody say it stops with me. It stops with me. God sent him a prophet to remind him of who he was. Amen. He reminds him that I am the Lord your God that delivered you out of Egypt. <laughs> he says, don't reference the other gods, but they didn't listen. And because of the oppression of Midian, Gideon tried to hide his work. Probably helpless and scared. But the Bible says an angel came to Gideon. Verses 15 and 16. It says, He said unto him, O oh my Lord, <laughs> wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with you. Amen. Surely I will be with you, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. It made me think of one man that smited the sins of the world for our sins for us. Yeah. It made me think that man, he was a mighty man of valor who died on that cross for our sins. Amen. I'm here to tell somebody that God's not looking for your good enough. That's right. Amen. If you tried to get to the point you thought you were good enough for God, you would never make it. You'd be in that secret, counterfeit secret place trying to get an increase and it never happened. Come on. Point two this morning is, is getting the revelation. We've recognized the patterns. We've identified the root. But now there's a revelation that we have to get. Yeah. We have to understand this revelation. Acts 1 and 8 says when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you receive power. That's the revelation. Amen. And Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I have given you all authority over the power of the enemy to tread on serpents and scorpions. Rejoice not that the spirits obey you, but rather that your names are written in heaven. There's a revelation. Verse 22. It says, and when Gideon perceived that an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. This is not the end of your road. Amen. Yeah. This is not what's going to kill you. That's right. the, the, you will live and not die, declares the Lord. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. It stops with you. It will not be the end of your life. It will yeah. not be the thing that takes you out. It will be the thing that you set or break and yeah. cancel. So it will no longer go down your bloodline. You say, it stops with me. Yeah. I will not let it go yeah. further. Yeah. There's a joy and a confidence when you come to the revelation that I can tell that stinking devil, get out of here. Amen. There's life beyond where you are right now. Come on. I think about, I, I, I opened the service a little while back with this, but we always want to try everything else but Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right? And you talk to a kid and you say, well, what's your favorite food? Chicken fingers. And you try to get them to eat something healthy, right? But they don't trust that them Brussels sprouts are good. Yeah. <laughs> 
But then later on when they come to it and they say, you know what, this is good for me after all. If we just skip all the bull and come to the fact that Jesus is the only power that can save yeah. you, we can come to it. There ain't no power of witchcraft going to save you. Listen, I don't care if you're blue witch, green witch, black witch, blue witch. It don't matter. That power is going to send you to hell. It's Amen. not going to send you to hell. It don't matter. It don't matter. Psalms 34 and 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. We go to verse 24. It says, Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord. Now he built it there. He built it where he yeah, was. That's he came right. to the revelation. Hear me on this. This is important. He came to the revelation right here. Right? And he built his altar to the Lord. And the Lord didn't stop him. The Lord let his excitement brew up. The Lord let the revelation download. He said, Man, build that altar. Man, because you've been building all them over there. I'm, I'm just glad to see you building this one. Amen. Amen. Okay. It says that he built the altar there and called it Jehovah Shalom unto this day. Yet an offer to the Abezzarites. Gideon in his excitement and revelation built an altar to God. And that's what happens when a new believer gets to revelation. You build your altar to God. You erect, you erect it, right? You say, Lord, I'm going to serve you. Lord, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to quit cussing, drinking, watching porn. I'm going to quit all of it. I'm going to live for you, Lord. And God's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then it says in verse 24, it came to pass the same night. So we got the revelation. It that's says right. the same night, the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that your father has. Mm. And cut down the grove that it is by. Amen. Now hear this. And build an altar. He already built one. He built yeah. one over here. He built one there. That's good. It says, And build an altar unto the Lord God, thy God upon the rock in the ordered place. Amen. And some of y'all got an altar to God, but it's not in the place of priority in your life. Amen. And that's why you're suffering from bondage, and that's why you still got a demon, and that's why you still got a curse, is because you refuse to go and tear down your father's altar. You know what happens when an altar stays in the house? They teach you to sacrifice on it. Amen. And the reason you don't tear it down is because you plan to re-sacrifice on Amen. it. Amen. You've got to be willing to tear down the altar so you don't return to the gods of the land. Amen. Amen. And take the second bullet. And offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove that it was cut down by. Now, I, I thought this, I, I really didn't dig into this too much, but the second bullet was seven years old. If you remember the first verse, it said that they were given in the hand for seven years. A burnt offering is a sin sacrifice, like an offering to forgive sin. So he was, he was pleading his repentance. Is what he was doing. And he was saying, Lord, I'm going to change my ways. I'm no longer going to sacrifice to the altar. I'm going to tear the altar down and provide the sacrifice of, of, of willingness to serve in the ordered place. Come on. We're going to tear down the altar. That's what a generational curse is. Somebody, a long time in your bloodline, has erected an altar to, to lust and pornography for peace. And now, six generations later, you got somebody who's struggling with it. And you don't know why. You say, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's just me. No. No, you're having those thoughts because six generations ago there was an altar. Amen. And you've never torn it down. Amen. Amen. You found your, your dad's pornography magazine. You found the altar that he continuously sacrificed on. And what did that old devil do? He tempted you to sacrifice on that altar. Yeah. Amen. Tear the altar down. And you've got to build it in the right place. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't, you can't have two masters. You can't jump between the two. Choose this day whom you will serve. Yes. You're either choosing God or the devil. You gotta love one and hate the other. Come on. Pick. Amen. Pick. Yeah. He talked about alignment. He talked about choosing where you stand, drawing that line. Yeah. You better pick. Amen. And you hope you pick the right side. Yeah. Because if you don't, something's coming. This world's coming to an end. There's going to be a fire devour this earth, and if you ain't on the right side of that line, you're going to burn up with it. Yeah. But I want to tell somebody you can be free. Yeah. I want to tell somebody that you ain't got to worry about those thoughts. Yeah. That you ain't got to worry about all that because there's an altar, then it can be torn down. Amen. You have authority to tear it down. That's right. You have authority you can walk in. Jesus gave that for you. My father was an alcoholic, so I'm an alcoholic, so my son's an alcoholic. Now somebody say again, it stops for me. It, it stops, stops for me. Amen. Stopped. Point number three is walking in victory. We want to walk in victory. And sometimes those things hinder us. But once we find the root of the issue, come to the revelation that we have authority and power over the enemy, we can truly walk in the victory that God has for us. Amen. You can walk holy. Do you know that? I'm not talking about the perfection that the, the Baptists preach. I'm talking about you can walk in holiness, Amen. in separation from sin. We're not just going to pray about it. We're going to cast it out. 
Amen. We're going to tear it down. We're not going to tell you to go home. We're here to help you. Yeah. And you can be set free. You're not weird. You're not just a bad person. You can't control it. And that's okay. Amen. People's got to get comfortable talking about it. Yeah. God says confess your faults one to another. You may be healed for the prayer of righteousness may availeth much. It's okay. It's okay. You sit down with some of your pastors and you're going to find out that it's okay. Yeah. Amen. You, don't, you don't be a pastor without a past. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but walking in victory. If you, want to, if you want to walk in victory this morning, shout amen. 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 So verse 32 says, Therefore on that day he called him Jerebel, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he has thrown down his altar. Amen. <laughs> And the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and there went and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. Now these are just a few little points that I've put on here. But you, can, you can jot these down if you want to. But first we've got to break the curse. This is how you walk in the authority that God has given you. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You have the ability, power, and authority to by your voice break every generational curse. And I feel curse is broken right now. Yeah. <laughs> How you can renounce by your voice and break the generational curses right. over your life. That's right. You can speak it out of you. You can say, I stand in disagreement with the enemy. Amen. And I break down the generational altars of iniquity in my life. That's right. My son will not be an alcoholic. My son will not be addicted to porn. My children will not suffer with mental illness. Yeah. Amen. 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 Break the generational curses. He gave that to you. That's grace. That's yeah. the power of God that He's given us. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And the next point is repenting of the sin. Yeah. Yeah. You've renounced it. You've, you've, you've said, I hate sin. I do not want you. I don't want nothing yeah. to do with you. Now what you've got to do is change your mind about it. Yeah, Amen. that's right. See, I vocalize that I hate it. Now I've got to determine in my mind that I don't want it. That it's not good for me. That it don't anoint me. That it don't fill me. That it actually steals the increase of my anointing should I walk in sin willingly. Amen. Amen. You've got to change your heart towards it. Renounce it. Speaking vocally, the separation from sin. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And now you have to tear down the stronghold. Amen. Breaking the habit. The internet says, and I put this on there, and as the worship team comes up, I'm getting ready to close. The internet says it takes 30 to 60 days to break, break habits. I'm believing in this moment that people can be set free in seconds. And minutes. I'm believing that right now as you think to yourselves the generational patterns that you see, and some of you see them, and some of you know what they are, that now you have authority. And as they do altar call, I encourage you, come up here and we'll pray with you. But I want you to vocalize your voice, bring forth your voice and cancel every assignment over your life. And take the measures to separate from the triggers of sin. So look, there, there's some places you just can't go no more. All right? There's some friends you're just not going to be able to hang out with no more. You're not strong enough. I don't care what you're doing. You know, I, I mean, I am weak. I, I can't be set by a liquor bottle alone. You know what I'm saying? It's just not real. You can't. But you can separate from that. Amen. And as you separate from those triggers of sin, you tear down the strongholds by breaking the patterns of running back to the altar that you've been so comfortably sacrificing. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to pray over us if that's okay. Amen. Father, I take authority over every demonic altar in this place and every spirit attached to any demonic altar in this place I take authority over you and I break down I stand in the gap for this congregation and I tear down every demonic altar of pornography, of lust, of nicotine of meth, I tear them down now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I command every spirit attached to these altars underneath the sound of my voice to leave them now in Jesus name to come out of their bodies now in Jesus name we have made you our enemy we declare that towards you you are not our friend we will no longer return to the altar Father I pray that their hearts be searched for these generational curses, that they would go home, that they would come to the altar, that they would renounce their affiliation with the enemy, that they would tear down the personal altars in their home, that they would tear down the personal relationships that they've sacrificed in for so long. I pray they would tear them down in Jesus' name. 
And Father, I just pray that Your Spirit will move in this altar call, Lord, that Father, I just believe right now that freedom is taking place. Amen. Father, I just believe that curses are being lifted, that altars are being torn down. I pray, Lord God, that you just have your way with the rest of this service, Lord. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.